There are now growing calls for a student loan bill of rights or some set of nationwide protections for the millions buckling under crushing debt. The higher costs of higher education is creating a stranglehold on mobility for some, and many say it's only getting worse. So tonight we wanted to take a comprehensive look at the crisis. Our Trevor Alt begins his look with what happened with one group of students and the surprise gift from a billionaire that changed their lives. To celebrate. 396 graduating seniors at Morehouse College sat listening to commencement speaker and billionaire Robert Smith last May. We're going to put a little fuel in your bus. Many in the crowd didn't even know who Smith was, but he was about to change their lives. This is my class, 2019. <laughs> My family is making a grant to eliminate their student loans. With that gesture, $34 million in student debt was wiped away, including that of Eli Kirkland. I'm not going to lie, there was part of me that was like, man, I really don't even want to be here. But I mean, I'm not mad no more. <laughs> <laughs> Eli wasn't even supposed to be there that day. Financial aid issues had kept him from graduating the year before. After getting behind on credit card payments and his parents taking out loans to help, he was ready to leave Morehouse with more than a hundred grand in student loans. Instead, he left with zero. <laughs> I was just spending time with my degree. <laughs> Wait, your your debt your debt free degree? Debt free degree. Oh. <laughs> I'm coming later. When that happened. My credit score, first of all, went up tremendously. I'm just able, I just have so much more freedom. I'm not handicapped to that bad credit. Congrats. I wish I was in your position. Oh, Jordan Randall, class of 2020, did not get a billionaire commencement speaker. He didn't even get a commencement. <laughs> With coronavirus sending everyone home, his family put together this humble, socially distanced gathering in the backyard. And while Jordan is still grateful for what he has, debt collectors don't take gratitude as payment for his student loans. It's definitely over 20000 But I, I almost feel bad saying that because... I've literally said that and some students have laughed at me and like, you know, I wish I had your case, which is sad. Moving in, you know, getting my new car, trying to apply for another credit card, just doing those typical adult things have been a lot harder. Both Eli and Jordan, fresh into the workforce, say the system of higher education needs to be re-examined. That exorbitant college costs may be putting those who want a degree in a position where they can only get ahead if they're bailed out by a billionaire. There are a lot of people who are struggling or, you know, who have that degree and can't find work. They're using every penny to pay off that debt. A lot of people are stuck in so much debt that they can't even do what they studied for. So it's like, what's the point? In the midst of the pandemic, Jordan and the millions paying student loans have some temporary relief. In March, the Congressional Relief Package suspended federal student loan payments and collections and waived interest. Uh, to help our students and their families, I've waived interest in all student loans held by federal government agencies. President Trump has since extended that through the end of the year. But that relief is not going to last forever. And seeing the rapidly inflating student loan totals, currently $1.7 trillion nationwide, researchers are examining the question, is an increasingly expensive college education even worth it? This is outpaced inflation and other growth in prices and wages for many, uh, many Americans. And so it, it kind of uh, gives a sense of crisis. Lowell Ricketts is lead analyst of the St. Louis Fed Center for Household Financial Stability. And while he says, yes, college is still a worthy investment, you have to be smart about it because the payoff isn't nearly as guaranteed as it was a generation ago. The returns relative to the generations that came before are starting to weaken when it comes to wealth. And it's even more striking for graduates of color. According to their data, for black Americans born as early as the 1960s, having a college or postgraduate degree was statistically insignificant to their wealth. That on average, even with all that extra schooling, they basically broke even. It points to some of the fundamental wealth gap sources as being deeply entrenched in our history and shows that how difficult it is for any one family or an individual to escape from some of the systemic 
gaps in wealth accumulation that we see based on race and ethnicity in the U.S. The millions of Americans taking on these giant student loans are betting on themselves and the opportunities a degree can provide. And make no mistake, higher education still plays an enormous role in upward social movement for a huge percentage of Americans. But college education has certainly never cost more. Since 1998, the price of college tuition has risen 183%, more than three times faster than overall inflation. From 1989 to 2016, the collective balance of outstanding student loan debt for American families rose from 8.9% to 22.4%. Nearly 7 in 10 members of the class of 2019 took out some form of a student loan, graduating with an average debt of nearly $30,000. And they joined the 44 million Americans Americans with student debt, and more than 11% of those student loans are at least 90 days delinquent or in default. For some, the dreams of a college degree can soon turn into a nightmarish burden. When I finished college, I was still working at Starbucks. I was working at a call center, and I was also delivering mail on Saturdays. And I still couldn't afford the loans when they came in. It's $700 a month. Katrina Williams found herself with more than $100,000 in student loan payments, and she couldn't get a better paying job. She says she was caught in a vicious cycle, breaking out in hives from the stress, even sometimes too broke to buy gas to go to work. Even if I worked three jobs until I paid nothing but my student loan debt, sold every belonging I had, I still wouldn't be able to pay it off with in the next 30 years. I can't. Katrina moved to Japan to teach and decided she just wouldn't pay her loans. She says almost immediately the stress was lifted, but the horror she feels towards what she says is a rigged system hasn't gone away. So when I was 18 years old and my eyes were full of stars and I'm like, I'm going away to college. I had no idea this was the future. I had no idea what all those giant numbers meant. I was a kid. People are starting to realize, oh, those millennials aren't just eating avocado toast and being lazy. They're cri in crippling debt. And they're like, I'm over $100,000 in debt. No financial or legal expert would recommend defaulting on your loans and leaving the country. Nick Dukoff is the founder of Edmit, which helps students maximize their financial aid opportunities. The college degree is still worth it. Uh, the average college graduate earns nearly a million dollars more over the course of their lifetime than a comparable high school graduate without a college degree. So generally speaking, it's worth it, but the devil is always in the details. For students looking to go to college, he says it's essential to know the financial implications ahead of time, just as you would for buying a house or a car. And if you're already in mounting debt, exhaust every available option, like income-driven repayment, to minimize the burden if you can. Make sure you understand what options are available with respect to addressing your student debt. I'd also say that they're not alone. There's a lot of, uh, unfortunately, other uh, students that have an awful lot of student debt and their communities online um, that they can find and, and, and um, meet others who have uh, been chipping away at that debt. Of course, for the most recent graduates, that may not sound very promising. And even Jordan, who already has a job and is working toward paying off his debts, says it's time for a major overhaul. I think. The issue with the student loan system is now it's basically combusted. There does need to be a change in our, you know, uh, academic system in general. And, you know, because I, I do feel like it still benefits people who come from wealth, you know, because that's who it's made, that's who it was made for. Trevor Alt, ABC News, New York. Hi everyone, George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.